Welcome to the Ashtower Project Site Manager training video for the Georgia Department of Transportation, presented by Infotech Inc. This training video is entitled Adding Sample Records in Site Manager. In this video, you'll receive instruction about the following topics. Creating a sample record, entering sample data, assigning tests to a sample, opening a sample, copying a sample, and finding a sample. To demonstrate Site Manager materials and LIMS for you, I will use the Georgia Department of Transportation's customized Site Manager training environment, containing GDOT data and customizations that GDOT has developed for non-agency materials users. At GDOT, you will access Site Manager and LIMS through Citrix. Log on to Citrix following the instructions provided to you by GDOT. You will then log on to Site Manager via GDOT's virtual applications. So let's create a sample record. First, I want to go to the Materials Management panel. I'm going to double-click the Materials Management icon, double-click the Sampling and Testing icon, and I'll double-click the Sample Information icon. This puts me into the Maintain Sample Information window in Site Manager. When you create a sample record at GDOT, the sample ID is automatically populated. This consists of the user ID of the person creating the sample and the date and time the sample is created. For example, my sample ID is train 0114BQ112912. The GDOT Quick Reference Guide entitled Adding a Sample Record in Site Manager contains a table at the end of the guide showing a detailed breakdown of the sample ID. The beginning of that is my user ID. I'm logged in as train 01. That's followed by the date and time the sample was created. Two digits for the year. The months have one digit. January through September are represented by one through nine. January is one, February is two, March is three, etc. Since we only have one digit for the month, when we get to the double months like October, November, December, they start with letters A, B, and C. We also have only one digit for the day. So the first through the ninth of each month are one through nine, respectively. And then starting with the tenth of the month, we start using letters again. The tenth is A, eleventh is B, twelfth is C, etc. Next we have two digits for the time in military time for the hours, two digits for the minutes, and two for the seconds. When you create a sample, the sample date and log date are automatically populated with the date the sample is created and the sample is automatically put into pending status. You can edit the sample date if the physical sample was collected on a previous day. As I'm going to show in my example, I'll click in the sample date field and enter 050114 for May 1st, 2014. The log date field is automatically populated and cannot be changed. So next in the sample type field, we're going to choose our sample type. Click the drop-down list, and I'm going to scroll down and choose QPL Approval Annual. We'll select the Acceptance Method in the Acceptance Method field. Click the drop-down, and I'm going to choose Qualified Products List. Our next field is the Material field, and when I put my cursor over that field, notice that it changes to a search lens. This is a search field. I'll click the right mouse button and select the search option and this will display a listing of all of GDOT's materials. It's quite a long list. I'm going to use the sort function and sort by material code and I'm looking for a particular material to associate to my sample. So I'm going to scroll down and I want material code FABR88163. I can either double click that row or highlight the row and click the OK button. My next field is the sampler field, also a search field. If someone other than yourself took the physical sample, you can identify that person as the sampler. I'm going to right click and select the search option. And I'm going to scroll down. I'm looking for Janice Grady or Jay Grady. Click the row and click OK. You'll only be able to see and select samplers who are associated with your organization. The next information that I want to select is the producer supplier. You'll also only be able to see producer suppliers associated with your organization. 
So I will right click, again we have a search field, pick the search option, and in my search window I'm only going to see the producer suppliers that are associated with my organization and with the material I've selected. So I'll click the OK button to select contact. I want to choose a product name, also a search field, so I will right click and select search. And again, you will only see the products that are associated with your organization and with the material we've selected. Click the OK button. Next, I want to select the geographic area for my sample. I'm going to select District 7 from the drop-down list. And in my represented quantity field, I'm typing a 1. This is the quantity of the material that this sample represents. Please note the lab control number. This number is the same as your sample ID with a CN at the beginning. I'm going to talk about lab control number later in this video during the copy a sample topic. So for now I have entered all of the basic information I have from my new sample record and I'm ready to save this information. So I'll click the Save button on the toolbar and I'm ready to move to the next tab. I'm going to click the Additional Sample Data tab. GDOT doesn't currently use this tab, although this area may be used by some labs in the future. And this is where you can enter a variety of additional information. Now let's click the Contract tab. Here I can associate my sample to a particular contract or contracts and items. I'll click the New button. And in my Contract ID field, this is a search field, I'm going to right click and select Search. The search window is going to list any contract that has an item on it that is associated with this material. So I'll go ahead and click the OK button. Now I have a project number and items that I can select from. There may be multiple items or there may only be one. In our case, we only have one item and I'll click the OK button. This will be the item that is associated with the material we have selected on our sample record. This gives me an opportunity to put in another represented quantity. I'm going to type a 1. This represented quantity is the quantity of the material for the sample that is associated with this contract and item. So if you have more than one item or contract on this sample, you can have portions of the sample quantity represented by individual items. Go ahead and save. And I'm ready to move on to the other tab. Go ahead and click that tab. This is where we're going to assign the destination lab to our sample record. You cannot assign tests to a sample or progress the sample through the LIMS workflow until the destination lab has been assigned. So in the Type drop-down list, I'm going to choose Destination Lab. And in the ID field, I'll put my cursor over that field, and it's a search field. Right-click and select Search. And for you, you will only be able to select your organization as your destination lab. For training here, I'm going to select the Field Lab destination choice and click OK. And I will save. So now we've entered our basic sample data, we've associated a contract and item to our sample, and we've selected our destination lab. At this point, we can be ready to assign tests to our sample record. Please note that assigning tests to the sample will lock the sample record and progress the sample into the LIMS workflow. You cannot then change your tests. So be sure you know what tests you want to assign before performing the next steps. If you do assign the wrong tests, the lab supervisor or lab manager can go in and make adjustments to that through a different window. So we're ready to assign tests to our sample. Let's go to the toolbar and click the T button, which is the Open Assign Tests button. At GDOT, you will click the More button and this will bring up the Assign Sample Test window where we will choose the tests to assign to our sample. So this uh, additional available tests window 
shows all of the tests that are associated to our material. And if we scroll over, we can see the test method or code there as well. So I want to select the test method 881histR, which is already selected. So I'll click the Add button, and it will move it to the Tests to be Assigned pane. You can see that there is one test run automatically entered. If you need to run more than one test, you can change that number here. We're going to leave it at one test. You can also assign multiple tests to this material as appropriate on this sample. I'm only going to assign the one for training for now. So I will go ahead and click the Save Tests button at the bottom of the window, which has now assigned the tests. It brings us back to our Maintain Sample Information window on the Basic Sample Data tab. And if you notice, our status of our sample is now logged. Site Manager has progressed this sample into the LIMS workflow, and it's ready to be received in the labs and then go through the test, enter test results area. If at this point you wanted to create another new sample, you could click the New button, and Site Manager would give us a new sample window. We're not going to do that right now. For now, we're going to go look at a sample that has already been created. So to open an existing sample record, click the Open button. And I'm going to sort by sample ID. I can click the sample ID column header, which sorts my uh, list by sample ID in ascending order. And then I can also use the Find field here. I can click in that field and type in the record that I'm looking for. So I'm searching for a sample record with a sample ID that contains auth A, A-U-T-H dash A in capital letters. So I type that in and Site Manager takes me right to that record. So I'll click the OK button. And so this has opened a sample that I created previously. So from here I can view my sample, I can go through the tabs, I can complete information if I had not entered all of my information previously. If I had not assigned tests yet, I could come in here and assign my tests to my sample record. I can also copy a sample. Site Manager provides a copy feature so that you can copy this sample to create a new sample record. This is quite useful if you're creating multiple samples for the same material. Copying a sample does not copy test assignments, however. Those you have to go back in and put in manually. So you must be in the sample record you want to copy from, which we are. So go to the Services menu and select Copy Sample. Now, Site Manager gives us a copy sample prompt. It asks if we want to create a new lab control number or copy our lab control number from our existing sample. Ensure that the Create New Lab Control Number box is highlighted. We want to create a new lab control number that is going to be the same as our new sample ID with the CN at the beginning. Click OK. And let's go ahead and save this. So Site Manager has created a new sample record for us. We have a new sample ID. Remember, the sample we copied had auth A in the sample name. And our lab control number is the same as our sample ID with a CN at the beginning of it. Let's go ahead and click on the Contract tab. And you can see that it has copied over our contract and item that were associated with our previous sample. If we go to the Other tab, we'll see our Destination Lab, or in your case, your organization is still associated. But if I click on the Tests tab, there are no tests associated. So I'll click OK. So at this point, you would need to associate tests, or when you're ready to, you would click on the Open Assign Test button on the toolbar and go back through the process that we've already looked at. So once all of your viewing or modifications have been made to your sample record, you can close the sample. And that takes us back to the sampling and testing window. So there's another way in Site Manager that you can search for and review samples. That's the Find Sample window. So let's go look at that. I'm going to double-click the Find Sample icon. 
This allows you to search by various parameters. I want to search by sampler, so I'm going to click the Sampled By checkbox, and that activates my Sampled By field. This is a search field, so I'll right-click and select Search. In my search window, I'm going to scroll down and select Janus Grady and click the OK button. You can search by more than one criteria if you would like to. If so, samples must meet all of the criteria that you specify in order to display. I'm only going to search by sampled by field, so I'm going to click the OK button. And Site Manager displays a list of all the sample records that are sampled by Janice Grady. You can click on whatever row you need to to highlight it. I'll just use the first row. Click the Services menu and View Sample. And Site Manager will open that sample record. And I can come in and review my information. When your review is complete, you can just close that window. I'm going to close the Find Samples window as well. And I have completed my exercises. So I'm going to exit Site Manager. I'll click the File menu and the Exit option. Our next training video will demonstrate receiving samples in the labs in LIMS.